Most robots, which map and navigate their environment autonomously, use wheel odometry to work out what their position is, as well as other sensors. This means measuring how far each wheel has rotated, knowing the circumference of the wheel, working that back to how far the motor has run through gearboxes, and measuring encoder counts on each motor to work out with trigonometry the robot's position and its rotation in space. In the last video I tested out an Intel RealSense T265 tracking camera which will track its location in space in 3 axis of translation and 3 axis of rotation. I attached the camera to my robot dog and you can find the full build series for that robot in my channel. Clearly it doesn't have wheels to measure and although it does have feet with a predictable stride, it's very wobbly and the legs are quite elastic so it wouldn't give us very reliable odometry data. Even though the dog wobbles as it walks, we can see that's reflected really well with the tracking camera. So this seems to be a good solution instead of wheel odometry. So I combine the tracking camera with a LiDAR, which is a laser scanning rangefinder, and that'll allow us to hopefully map the environment and potentially navigate in it. I put the two together on a 3D printed stand with a serial interface for the laser, and both of them are connected with USB to my workstation. We're using ROS, the robot operating system, and here I've applied a transform to stick the laser and the tracking camera together. That means as we move the tracking camera around in the environment, we see a transform for the laser moving with it, and the laser scan should stay still, plotting out the walls as the camera and the laser assembly moves within it. And to prove this works well with no wheel odometry whatsoever, I mounted the whole thing on some cardboard and pulled it down the floor with a piece of string. I've got a long USB cable trailing there as well, and we're running ROS G mapping. You can see that it's actually building a map of the environment as we pull it past a stairwell that gets rendered, and despite the junk all around the room and the rather messy edge, we can see we get a rather clear map in the end. The next thing is to mount the whole thing on the robot dog and see if that can draw a map, and the advantage of a robot which can walk all around or drive all around is that we can cover the areas multiple times and get a much better render. I wasn't sure how the laser was going to hold up because the dog's quite wobbly and shaking it all around doesn't seem like much of a good idea, but it actually worked pretty well and we managed to draw a map of the whole environment. The next thing to get working would be driving between waypoints autonomously, and I've already achieved this with my really useful robot project, which is ongoing, and you can find that in my channel as well. That's using a slightly better laser, one that costs about four times the price, so the map's slightly better, and it's only using wheel odometry to work out its position in space. It's time to rebuild the mount though, because with hindsight I really should put the laser on the top, so that it gets a 360 view, instead of being blocked by the stick at the back that's holding the camera up. So I'm 3D printing some new pieces for that. This will again consist of two platforms to put the laser and the camera on, and we also need to mount a Jetson Nano this time to run ROS on. Thanks to 3D Fuel for providing the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects, and check out 3dfuel.com. I wanted to make the module as compact as possible so we can drop it into any robot that we want to make map and navigate, so this time it resembles a box with a top and bottom and two sides that contain everything. The bottom shelf takes a Jetson Nano 4GB version which is more than sufficient to run ROS. This is a small computer running Linux which also has lots of GPU for machine learning, and you can check out some machine learning projects in my channel too. The Intel RealSense tracking camera has two M3 bolt holes in the back, so we can simply screw that onto a bracket and mount it into the module. Again, I've put a hinge in this so we can adjust the angle, but for now it's just going to face forwards, and I think that's the best angle for it to be at. The top shelf takes the LiDAR, and that again just attaches with four M3 bolts. Putting it right on top means it gets a 360 view, so there's nothing obstructing it. Two sides are then screwed on, and I've left holes in those in case I need to access the GPIO pins or the camera connector on the Jetson in the future. Finally the lid is placed on, and again that's been screwed on to complete the module, which is looking quite compact. The LiDAR serial adapter fits on the top platform, and there's plenty of space for that. I could get a shorter USB cable to plug it into the Nano, but the camera actually ships with a really long cable as well, so I've just coiled them both up and zip-tied them up for neatness. Now this is the complete module that we can mount on a robot.
Despite its early more exciting life as a Nerf Blaster robot, this robot did actually autonomously navigate and map the environment using ROS. It didn't work very well though because it's when I was just learning ROS, it used wheel encoders and some code that I found from another project. It tended to get lost a lot though and drive around in circles, but the hardware is probably okay for doing some more testing. But before we look at that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board. And they'll do surface mount and through hole assembly. PCBWay manufacture all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass PCBs, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly, but new customers can get $5 credit so you can get 10 PCBs for free the first time you order. PCBWay also offer advanced services such as PCB design, x-ray inspection, electronic probe inspection, impedance control and various certification capabilities including ROHS and UL certification. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. So I've mounted the new module with the tracking camera and the Jetson Nano on top of the robot and we're going to use that to try and map and navigate in the environment instead of the old configuration with the wheel encoders. I mounted the whole module slightly further forward because the robot has a wheel with suspension at the back and we don't want it to tip over backwards too much. I added a 5 volt 10 amp regulator and another battery to power the Jetson Nano and everything plugged into its USB ports, that's in addition to the existing battery that powers the wheels. I also added a USB 3 hub so I can plug everything in at once because we've only got 4 ports on the Jetson Nano. This robot already has an Arduino Mega fitted and two motor drivers to drive the wheels, and we can run the ROS serial library which can communicate with the Arduino directly from ROS to publish ROS topics and ROS messages to and from the Arduino. I do have wheel encoders on here, but I'm going to remove them just to show that it works without any wheel odometry, and they weren't fitted very well in the first place anyway. However, as well as using the wheel odometry to work out what the robot's position is, we can also use the wheel encoders to regulate the robot's speed. We need to drive quite accurately based on the commands we're sending it. So I've just recalibrated and recoded the Arduino, it's running completely open loop, but I roughly need to get the scale right, so when I say we're driving at 1 meter a second, it actually is driving at near 1 meter a second. We've got quite powerful motors and a battery that can source lots of current, so there's not really any issues with just scaling the PWM fed into the motor drivers directly from the command velocity topic and the twist message it sends to drive the robot at particular speeds and make it rotate at particular speeds. A ROS transform, or TF, is the glue that sticks everything together. So I've issued a transform that again sticks the camera to the laser and also the base link of the robot to both of them. ODOM is the stationary reference, and the robot's base link moves away from it depending on how far it's travelled since it was powered up. We can see everything's working pretty well because the laser scan stays pretty much still as the robot moves around in the environment, and this is a really important part of the configuration to getting mapping and navigation working properly. Another feature with the tracking camera is that if I physically move the robot, it moves on the map. And this is because the tracking camera works in free space and it isn't reliant on wheel odometry. Here you can see a closer view of the transform showing the laser with the base link of the robot below it as well as lots of words on top of each other which are all the different sensors in the tracking camera. And you can see the laser scan is at the right level for the laser which is above the camera. My really useful robot that you can find in my channel already does mapping and navigation with ROS really well. This is using wheel odometry as well as the laser, but we've already got a good configuration for the navigation stack and there's quite a lot to it. So all we really need to do is take most of that configuration and apply it to the new robot. As it turns out, the tracking camera actually publishes an ODOM topic which is separate from the transform and gives us a velocity estimate as well as the position of the robot, and this is required for the navigation stack. The ODOM topic published by the really useful robot is called ODOM, and the new one is called something else, so I've just changed that configuration in the really useful robot navigation stack, and I haven't changed anything else. So after recompiling, we should be all set to try it out and see if we can actually map and navigate. 
First of all, we've got to create the map and I'm using ROS G mapping. I'm driving the robot manually using my Universal Robot Remote and you can check that project out in my channel as well. The remote's based on a Raspberry Pi with a 7 inch touch screen and it just issues the command velocity topic with a twist message for the joysticks. I've also got buttons on there and the capability to build a touch screen interface but there's more in the dedicated video about that. One way or the other, the map seems to be building okay, although the laser isn't quite as good resolution as the one on the really useful robot. The really useful robot has the RP LiDAR A2 and this one is the A1. This one costs about £100 and the A2 is over £400. The moment of truth comes when we try to actually navigate to a 2D nav goal and that's the big red arrow you can see me drawing on the map. We have several map layers here, including the original map we drew, and then the pink, which is marking and clearing. So as the robot detects new objects, it puts them on the map, and when they disappear, it clears them. Now you'll see there's lots of extra stuff on there, which isn't really on the map, and I think that's because the laser is quite cheap, and it's picking up reflections from the shiny kitchen cabinets. There's also an inflation radius, coloured in light blue, around every object, which is how far the robot stays from it, and that's currently set to 20 centimetres. However, the robot thinks it's the really useful robot, which is slightly wider. So it is giving things quite a wide boundary and not going too close to them, which I guess is okay. We can see the map is clearing up as the robot drives around and finds that some phantom objects aren't really there, but then some others still appear. So I really think this is down to the quality of the laser because I never had these issues with the really useful robot. One way or the other though, it seems to navigate okay from one goal to the next, although sometimes it's a bit sketchy on the corners where that inflation radius is probably a little bit too big for the physical size of the robot. I'm pretty happy with how well that works considering we've got no wheel odometry at all. Obviously it would be better if we did have wheel odometry, we fuse that data with the tracking camera data to get an even more accurate estimate of where the robot is, but what we can do with this module is now drop that onto any robot to make it map and navigate. Perhaps even something really big like Colin Furze's screw tank, provided we could drive the hydraulic controls with an Arduino and we had a laser scanner with a long enough range, we could basically make that whole thing drive around autonomously using ROS. So this would be really useful for a robot that doesn't have wheels at all, like a robot dog or a hovercraft or even a drone, and some of those are things that I'm going to be investigating in the future. For now the robot dog burns quite a lot of power just standing still, so I'm not going to do it just yet and I think we really need to look at that mechanical design again, but I'm really happy we've got a module now that we can drop onto any robot. So I'm going to be publishing the ROS config, the Arduino code, and the CAD for this, and the rough setup for ROS, all of that stuff's going to be on GitHub, so if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up, and be part of that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.